So I grew up like any normal kid would, but there was one peculiar difference. Nobody would buy me any toys. Pretty sad, right? But they had good reason to, because whatever toys would be bought for me would end up like this. Now, my dad was a very smart man. When I asked him that nobody's buying me toys and I, I want something, he said I could have whatever I want. But there is a catch. I had to build the toys myself. And this got me on a journey of making that has got me till here. When I built my toys, I felt like this. All my life, I wanted to be like Dexter. I wanted to build robots, I wanted to wear a lab coat, and that is all I wanted to do in my life. So being in India, there's only a few career choices that lead you in this, in this particular way. And I eventually became an uh, engineer and went to engineering college. Credit, credit to my father for uh, finding an innovative way of tricking me into getting into engineering. I joined engineering in MIT Manipal. And the first thing that I uh, found out was engineers do not wear lab coats. That was sad. But I did get to, uh, get to create a lot of different robots. Uh, ro all kinds of robots. Robots that fight each other, robots that pick and place things, robots that uh, can help people get their hands back. Uh, and uh, all of the time I was creating robots and obviously my um, education suffered. I was an average student. Uh, I do not know if parents and teachers still t tell their kids this, but uh, I was told that you pay attention in 10th standard, pay attention in 12th standard, do your boards well, and then the rest of the life is chill. I took that seriously. Now, whenever somebody would question me about my marks in engineering, I would, I would tell them that this is what I was told, and this is why I'm doing what I want to do. And I was making. One particular project, uh, which was uh, a robot that would be controlled by uh, the ability to think, you would, you would imagine and think the robot move and it would move. And this particular project got the attention of uh, my college and they wanted me to build a product. Now up till that time, all my robots were, were something like this, tiffin boxes with wheels on them. And I had no idea how to build uh, a product out of this. How do I build something that people would buy? And uh, I remember going across, all across Hyderabad, trying to find people that would help me, uh, help my team understand how to make, how to make products, how to build. Uh, but nobody, would, no, nobody was willing to help uh, college students with no money, right? Uh, but we had a lot of willpower, and we were not going to give up so easily. And we were determined to find out a way how to solve this. That is when I found out about two things that possibly have changed my life ever since. I found out about 3D printing, this amazing technology that creates three-dimensional objects, physical objects from uh, digital data, and the concept of open source and open source hardware, where people share the documentation and share the knowledge, and there are communities around these knowledge that help people to recreate uh, projects. And a lot of the information required to build your own 3D printer was open sourced. And so that got me into thinking that I can build my 3D printer, use that to build my robot, and I can make money. <laughs> uh, but things took a different turn. I built my 3D printer. Uh, it was a far cry from being able to build my robot. It would hardly work. I would have to sleep next to it, uh, making sure that you know, it prints for long periods of time. It would break down suddenly. Uh, so. Just like a kid getting a new toy and uh, leaving something behind, uh, we forgot all about the robot that we had to make and were obsessed with fixing this 3D printer. And we would 3D print upgrades and parts on the 3D printer, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade the printer, and then that's how the printer itself evolved. And soon we had something that looked like this, and it would print reliably. Uh, people from all around the college uh, were coming, uh, coming to us to get their parts 3D printed. We had people uh, designing prosthetic hands. We had somebody figuring out how to make a compressed air engine. We had architects coming to build architecture models. It was, it was amazing. And that's where we figured out that this is something that is solving such a great problem that people have. They have this energy to create energy to make, and that's such a fundamental human trait. And this is something that enables them to create. And that is how we started our, my entrepreneur, entrepreneurship journey along with my co-founder. 
um, and started a company called Fractal Works with the mission to empower creation, empower creativity of everybody. But we were still in college. I was, I was in the second of year of college. How does a couple of college students with no money uh, start a company? Uh, that's how 3D printing, again, helped me out. Um, the first 3D printer we had, 3D printed parts for the second. Now we had two. Then two became four, four became six. And suddenly, we had a small factory building parts for 3D printing. And that's how we were able to sell our first 3D printers. And once we got our first paycheck of somebody buying our, our first machine, and that was the day I got addicted to entrepreneurship. It's been four years since then. Uh, our printers are available all around the country. Um, it's from schools to engineering institutions to uh, R&D labs. Uh, we have built the printers with everybody in mind. We have uh, fashion designers designing amazing designs for shoes. We have architects uh, creating uh, amazing designs for architecture. Uh, we have uh, engineers creating amazing products. Um, I want to show you something, actually. So this is a tool. What makes this tool significant was this was one of the first uh, designs to be beamed up to space and 3D printed on uh, the International Space Station. And, and NASA open sourced the files. And just because I had a 3D printer, now I have the same tools that an astronaut uses. Isn't that mind blowing? So 3D printing, <laughs> thank you. Um, so 3D printing really is helping all of these uh, people all around the country doing really amazing things. And I personally wanted to explore how, what, what more can you do with this technology and the concept of open source and sharing where you involve a lot more people in the process of creating and solving problems. Um, we all have smartphones and we all acknowledge the uh, importance it has in our lives. We can do everything from ordering food to getting a cab to uh, paying our bills online. But when we made the transition from uh, button phones to touchscreens, we left an uh, important community behind. We left the visually impaired. And visually impaired struggle to use uh, smartphones. So one of the first projects that I worked on with 3D printing was uh, how do we solve the problem of accessibility of smartphone technology to uh, for the visually impaired. And that is where I created Tipo, uh, a 3D printed accessory for the visually impaired, which goes behind a smartphone and enables somebody who's blind to type in Braille, which is the format of uh, inputting data that they are familiar with. And this entire thing is open source. You can download the files print it yourself, you know somebody in your community who's blind and have access to a 3D printer, you have the tools, technology, and ability to recreate this and help, some, help the communities around you. That is the power of open source and 3D printing. To just give you an example, this is another project uh, where, of an open source smartphone. And just because I had open sourced the uh, design files for Tipo, they were able to integrate it into their smartphones. Now, th this, this spiked. Uh, people from all around the country helping me uh, and help and creating projects around this. And this is just an example of what 3D printing and open source can do in, in a short amount of time. I've always been passionate about the environment, probably because of my upbringing uh, in the defense background, uh, being aware of the limited resources we have. Growing up, uh, despite being able to uh, afford uh, a car, I preferred to cycle and got my teammates to cycle as well. I myself did 5,000 kilometers last year cycling from home to work. Um, reducing my carbon footprint, uh, consuming less, being, being conscious about the amount of plastic I consume, all of this was well and good. Uh, I was very conscious about my own carbon footprint, but it wasn't enough of an impact I was making for the rest of the world. I wanted to know what I could do to make a difference, and using the tools and technology that I had at my disposal. So to be a part of a larger community, I started exploring, and I found this person, Sir Robert Swan. He's the first person to walk to both poles, and I fell in love with his undying devotion to save the world. And he selected me on an expedition to Antarctica, along with a group of amazing people's, uh, people and change makers from all around the world. I wanted to use this opportunity as a platform to tell people about how innovation can save the world. And for this, uh, we developed a wind turbine, all 3D printed, um, so that uh, we can help make 
getting into and have access to renewable energy more e uh, easily. And we were successfully able to set up the wind turbine in Antarctica. <laughs> Thank you. But I was not alone. I, ha I got support from people all around Hyderabad and all around the world to get me to Antarctica in the first place. And even one there, I had a multinational team of people helping me set it up. The, the wind turbine became an example of how we all have to come together and share and innovate to create uh, positive change. And again, the three, all the parts of the wind turbine are open sourced. You have the power to go back download the files and recreate the same wind turbine that was set up in, in Antarctica. Now, nothing I do is, is possible without my team. And they enable me, and, and because of their support, they enable me to do what I can do. The same way, the future needs fixing. There are a lot of problems that, that are there. And it will only be solved with innovators being able to innovate, architects being able to architect amazing uh, uh, creations uh, with with students being able to come up with solutions that, that change the world. And we all need to work together and, and share this knowledge and, and innovate together. The future needs fixing, and, and, we can, and we need to do it together. And I know that the best way to predict the future is to create it. Thank you.